Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled, Is There a Planet 9 in the Outer Reaches of Our Solar System? Now, it has been recently uh, and widely publicized in an extreme TNO, which stands for Trans-Neptunian Object with a Strange Orbit suggests that the Planet 9 hypothesis may provide an explanation for this extreme orbit. The object is called 2015 BP519 and was discovered three years ago. The object appears to be in a highly inclined and extremely eccentric orbit. In fact, the eccentricity of the orbit is 0.92, which means that it is getting close to being an open or a hyperbolic orbit. In addition, the object's orbital inclination is 54 degrees, and its orbit is illustrated here. So if we have the Sun here, the object's closest uh, distance to the Sun is 35.2 AU, and its furthest distance from the Sun, or its aphelion position, is 863 AU. And because the solar system is believed to have a radius of about 100 AU, this means that this object's orbit takes it way outside the solar system. But it does orbit the Sun, so uh, we can say that it belongs to uh, the solar system. And But its orbital eccentricity is extremely high, it's 0.92. And we know that the orbital eccentricity of an object, uh, when it goes above 1, that corresponds to a hyperbolic or an open orbit. So this object is actually quite close to being in a hyperbolic orbit. And the object um, is actually uh, never uh, any closer to the Sun than Neptune's orbit, and Neptune's orbit is 30 AU. Now AU stands for astronomical units, and 1 AU is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So 30 AU is 30 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So this is already an extremely large distance. The object never, never comes any closer than Neptune's orbit. And this is why it's called an extreme TNO. And here we see its orbital inclination, which is 54 degrees, and this is high because the average uh, inclination of trans-Newtonian objects is only 17.3. So uh, these, uh, this is uh, a high inclination, as we see here, and that's the inclination to the ecliptic plane, where the ecliptic plane is the Earth's orbital plane. And all objects in the solar system orbit close to the ecliptic plane, orbit the Sun close. So this object at such an inclination, at such an eccentric orbit, is very strange. Now, because this object's average distance from the Sun is much greater than Neptune's orbit, it's called an extreme TNO. And uh, TNO, as I said, stands for trans-Neptunian object. And even though this object's orbital inclination is way above ab average, it is not as high as another TNO called NICO. And NICO, uh, which is class uh, classified as a minor planet, has a near polar orbit. And in addition, it has a retrograde orbit, which suggests that it is a new acquisition to the solar system. And for more details on that, you may look at Article 226 entitled NICO Recently Discovered discover newcomer in the solar system. Objects that have been a part of the solar system for billions of years are likely to orbit in the same direction as all the planets in the solar system and also to have a near circular orbit as an elliptical orbit causes the object to draw current in the solar capacitor and this will then have a drag effect on the object which thus circularizes its orbit and this is detailed in article 169 entitled planetary formation comets to planets and Nico's orbit is illustrated here and uh, its uh, closest distance from the Sun is only 23.9 AU, so it does come closer to the Sun than Neptune. Uh, 
and its furthest distance is 47.5 AU, whilst its average distance is 35.7 AU. And because this is higher than Newton's orbit of 30 AU, it's classified as a TNO. Its eccentricity is high at 0.33, but not nearly as high as 2015 BP519. That one is extreme. But Nikos' orbit is nearly polar. That is, with an inclination of 80 degrees, it orbits close to above the Sun's North Pole. And in addition, it's actually retrograde. So it orbits in an, in an opposite fashion to all the planets in the solar system, which is extremely surprising and suggests that it's a new acquisition and that the solar system is a dynamic system where new objects are constantly added. Now, according to Becker et al., who analyzed 2015 BP519's orbit, it's not possible to explain the extreme tilt of the orbit unless another planet exists beyond the orbit of Neptune, and hence the Planet 9 hypothesis. However, if this object, like Nico, is a new acquisition of the solar system, there is no need to explain the evolution of its orbit in terms of known solar system dynamics, simply because there has not been enough time for such an evolution. Astronomers have assumed that the solar system is a static system that never changes, but the fact is that it is a dynamic system that is constantly changing with new objects coming into it all the time. The fact that a system of dead stars or stellar cores have been invading the solar system for at least 150 years is evidence of that. And for more details on that you may look at article 146 entitled Planet X System Time of Arrival. Some of the evidence showing that these objects have been observed in the Sun's corona is shown here. So this is one of the images. This is an SDO image in 171 angstroms. We see a stellar core, the spherical object which looks dark within the sun's corona. The object is making a vortex or a meta connection with the sun as you can see here. It looks like a root-like connection. It's actually a vortex and this connection is as a result of tidal forces that it exerts on the sun and the tidal force is a a weak gravitational force uh, which uh, therefore has uh, just a strong uh, attraction for material right underneath the object but it's uh, its gravitational attraction uh, a bit further away is very weak. So it's tidal or differential force. It's high just underneath the object and low everywhere else. Now uh, these uh, objects, and there's more evidence here of another one, they look uh, they make perfect circles within the sun's corona simply because the corona has to part when these objects are there. This object seems to have features on its surface. And and as we can see, there's another one, another spherical object within the sun's corona, clearly, and also making connections to the sun. This is in 193 angstroms, another SDO image. These objects have been draining the sun for many years now, and the sun is weakening fast as a result. For more details on this, see Article 195 entitled Stellar Course and the Dying Sun, and Article 223 entitled Weakening Sun, Source Radiation Measurements on Not All Solar Radiation. The end result is that the sun will go dark just as its twin, Nemesis, may already have done as a result of being invaded by the same system of stellar cores or members of the same system. And you may look at Article 208 entitled Incoming Dark Star. Now, it's also widely believed that comets, which have very centric orbits, come from the Oort cloud, or a shell-shaped cloud of small objects far beyond the orbit of Pluto. However, there is actually no evidence that such a cloud exists, and it is more likely that comets just come into the solar system from outside it. In other words, it is likely that comets are interstellar travelers and that therefore all objects with extremely eccentric or inclined orbits such as Nico and 2015 BP519 
519 on new acquisitions which are recently and which have recently entered the solar system and have become newly captured objects. The evidence that the system of dead stars which have invaded the solar system are orbiting and affecting the Earth lies in the unprecedented tidal events which have occurred along many coastlines around the world. And only an object exerting a small gravitational attraction coming very close to the Earth would be able to exert a tidal force leading to such an effect. And since the stellar core's gravitational attraction is weak, this is the exact effect we would expect. And you may look at Article 227 entitled Stellar Cores Affecting Earth and Possible Connection to Volcanic Eruptions for more details. And we see here evidence of such an event, uh, this unprecedented uh, recession of the ocean that leaves places like this harbor empty of water, which has never really happened before. But this happened in August 11, 2017 in Ponta del Este, Uruguay. And uh, many more of these events have occurred worldwide. So, in conclusion, Extreme TNO 2015 BP519 is much more likely to be a recent addition to the solar system and thus further evidence that the solar system is a dynamic system with new objects being constantly added, rather than being evidence that another planet beyond the orbit of Neptune is influencing its orbit. We have evidence that extremely large objects are in the inner solar system and are affecting the Sun and the Earth. These objects are dead stars or stellar cores, and they have the potential of deeply affecting life on our planet. These objects should therefore be the real subject of interest, not a planet in the outer reaches of the solar system that cannot in any way affect our planet. However, it seems that the Planet 9 hypothesis is actually used as a diversion in order to focus people's attention away from the real truth. And here are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.